Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dancing Sober Podcast, and we are one week away from our live taping at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, so please put that in your calendars. We will be um, recording a live episode in front of a studio audience, so I hope that you are part of that studio audience at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. Follow them on Instagram and follow us, of course, to keep uh, updated on the matter, and I hope to see you there. Our guests that day will be Mario Ibarra Jr. and Ivan Gallardo, and I look forward to talking with them in front of all of you guys, so I hope you make it. I want to give a big shout-out to Espacio 1839 for allowing us to do the podcast here in the studio. Of course, they are at 1839 East 1st Street in Boyle Heights. You can find them online at espacio1839.com. We are an independent show, so I hope that you can buy some merch or support by donating, and our Venmo is right here, D-A-N-C-N-G-S-O-B-R. At Dancing Sober, don't forget to look for us. Without further ado, our guest this week is the amazing artist Salomon Huerta. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dancing Sober podcast. And this week we are here with artist Salomon Huerta. What's up, brother? You just walked in. I haven't seen you in about, I don't know, maybe five or six years or longer. <laughs> yeah, the last time I saw you was at the... At, uh, what, what's that place on Grand? Uh, oh yeah, we, we bumped into each other at Disney Hall. I was shooting yeah, something. Yeah, you were shooting there. something, yeah. Yeah. I actually, I got you, that's when I was doing the vlogs during the pandemic. Yeah. And I got you in like a little part of it, just walking by or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Well, you gotta send me that, I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's offline already. But it was like little videos that I was during the pandemic as I was just touring the city and doing stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. so how you been? Everything's a little crazy because, you know, I mean, we're going to go back and forth. Yes. But uh, I'm having a solo show in Chelsea with Harper's Gallery. And this is my third solo show back to back in a year and a half. Okay. And even when I was younger and I had more energy, yeah. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. But this is, <laughs> this is like, it's taking like, it's taking me for a ride, but it's all good. you know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, because uh, times are Right now, everybody's taking work when it comes, you know, it's like, yeah, it, you know, yeah, because my girlfriend, which, you know, Anna Morales, she's yeah. like, how come you don't ask them for an extension? How come you don't tell them to push it forward? Yeah. And I say, uh, you really can't do that because something may come up, another artist may pop up mm -hmm. and then going forward, you think it's three months ends up being like more than a year. Yeah. So uh, I don't say no to opportunities, and even if it means going through a lot of stress. You know? Yeah. Well, that's good to know the point that you're at right now, and then we're going to rewind it and go back to the beginning like we do in this podcast. But we start at the origin story, like, you know, what made Salomon Salomon. So, like, <laughs> starting from, uh, you know, where you were born. and, and uh, I was born in Tijuana. Oh, you know, and, and uh, what year? 65. Okay. And I really don't, I, I thought I came to the U.S. at four, my brother said at six. Oh. I really don't know, like I had to look at the paperwork. Uh, it's all blur back then, but um, uh, yeah, so. Do you have any memories of Mexico? I have memories of uh, and being in Tijuana with my cousins and playing, you know. Yeah. I always try to remember because I have, I, I have, the same thing where I think I came when I was four is what I was always told. But when I look at all the numbers and wait a minute, if my brother was born this year, then, you know, how, how does that work? But um, I really can't remember anything in Mexico, like nothing. <laughs> so I always wonder about that. Um, no, uh, it's, I wish I had memories of it. Yeah. Well, I, mean, um, yeah I mean, it's, I really only like remember playing yeah. with my cousins, but other than that, not that much, you know. So I was, you know, born in Tijuana, and then uh, my my family um, found a place in Hollywood, right there on I think on Franklin near the market, right there. Okay. Going into Beachwood, you know, the little neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, so my I uh, hope my family doesn't get mad, but like my uncles <laughs> were coyotes, you know, they would bring people across the border and everything. Oh, okay. That, so we lived in a house on Franklin, like a craftsman home mm. that had a huge basement. And they, they had like um, about 50 individuals that they just crossed over. Wow. So as a kid, my brother and I would take them like a pot of beans and tortillas. That's how they will eat. 
So they were wow. they were in there until their families came and, um, yeah. and normally they would stay on like a day, you know, or like yeah. or two days, you know, at the max. But they would come in there and and uh, and pay for bringing them across, you know. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, I really didn't make anything of it, you know. Yeah, I just, yeah. I, it was what it was. You yeah, know? when you were little, you just do what you're told. Yeah, so we were um, we lived there in that neighborhood till I was nine. And then we moved to the housing projects in in uh, in Hazard, uh, which I thought it was cool, you know, in the, you know, in the beginning because I saw a lot of kids. They were playing, oh, yeah. you know, and then and then it, 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 took, it took and then little by little you start to realize what the fuck. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't say. I, I started to realize what 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 the hell is this? It's like violence every day, you know, yeah. like pure violence, like you know. How, how old were you when you moved in, and what year was it? I don't know. I was nine. 70s. So what, what, what's that? Seventy. Fifty-five. Was that seventy-four? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. But yeah. So then I joined uh, uh, a little kids gang, like the Hill Boys. Mm. I I had no plan joining the gang. The the, the 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 little kids asked me, you know, do you want to be part of our group? And then yeah. thirty um, thirty seconds later, I'm being jumped in. You know. But, That's just uh, how it happened. Like whoever you're hanging around with became like your quote unquote. Yeah. Game. So uh, it was it was intense. I think I think a lot of my work that I do, the majority comes from that period because it was very like it's like a hyper reality. Like living in a in in the hood is intense, but living in a housing projects. You know, it's more like concentrated yeah. and it's more intense, you know, yeah. so it's crazy. So you lived there from that, from nine years old to how long? From nine to I was 26. Damn, so you, you went through it then. Yeah, I went so through it. All your teenage years and that's, those are the tough ones to like avoid. Yeah, and um, at the age of 23, I went to our Center College of Design. Yeah. Because a lot of my teachers were telling me to go there because my major back then was illustration. Let's go back a little bit to what, what high school did you go to then? Oh, I went to, I'm uh, sorry, I went to um, Lincoln High School for oh. three years. But I didn't learn anything, so, you know, like, and like, I literally, like, had problems with everything. And they, <laughs> they would still pass me to yeah. the next class yeah. because, because even though I wasn't learning, I was always on time. Mm. And I was always like positive, you know. Yeah. So they would just push me to the next class. So because I wasn't learning anything, I decided to go to Wilson for my last my last year. Wow, that's crazy. And did Wilson change? Was did you already start doing art when you were in high school? Did yeah, I was doing there. I think I, I it's still there. I did a couple of murals in in Lincoln High School, and then. And then I have like a small mural and uh, I don't know if it's still there in Wilson High School. So when you were at Lincoln High School, you were doing murals. Yeah, I've been doing art like for fun ever since I can remember like being like uh, five years old, you know. OK, so, so how was that? Like, tell us about how like art first became like a part of your life. Well, my sister Soledad, who's older than me, she back then she really knew how to draw and she had like a, a nice sketchbook mm. so uh uh she uh showed it to me and she was like showing me how to draw and i, I could recall drawing like godzilla and <laughs> and like donald duck and stuff like yeah. that you know so uh, like i still have images of my sister's drawings like nice. they're, they're very like very well done like she had a very like delicate sensitive line you know mm. um but that was my first experience and i just kept on doing it mm. yeah. did it become a part of like what people knew you as when you were young did people know you as like oh that guy is a drawer yeah 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 and uh, like in the projects what I've learned looking back is that if you're good at something, they leave you alone. Yeah. They, they leave you uh, alone. They don't. They don't mess with you. Like yeah. the bullies will not mess with you. Yeah. So I was good at basketball. So in that area, they left me, really? they left me alone. And I was good at drawing, a, and yeah. then they will call me like Picasso or they will call me Dali. Nice. Um, 
And then a lot of the, a lot of the homeboys when I was like 16 would bring photos and ask me, can you draw this for me? So yeah. I would trace it. They didn't know that I was tracing it. So I yeah. traced it and then they would take it to a tattoo artist and have it. Even if you trace, I mean, you still have to get in there and do like. Yeah, it's still not easy, yeah. but I, I, it, it was like a basic drawing. Looking back, I still yeah. recall how they looked. You know? Oh, that's pretty cool, though. Like to be able to do it good enough where they could go tattoo it. Well, a lot of those tattoos the homeboys had were very rough. You yeah. know? <laughs> they were all like. The old uh, guitar string. They were all um, like scattered throughout their body from yeah. different people, you know. That's crazy. That's the seventies. Um, so back then, like I, I know that um, it must have been hard, or, or maybe not in your instance, to think like, oh, maybe art is something I can do in the future. You know, were you already thinking that this was going to be? No, 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 yeah. no. That I had the the only um, re, uh, idea that I had of art was the murals of the. The streetscapers of Wayne yeah, Haley were, and, and was it David Potteo. So you grew up in Ramona, Ramona Gardens where there you had the Yeah, like I would see those in. murals every day. So yeah. that was like an inspiration, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, but I still didn't know anyone that was doing art for a living, you know. Mm. And um, it, you know, like it wasn't until I went to school that the teachers like in high school they were mm. pushing me they were pushing me you know like i got into um i mean i was a lincoln high school and a teacher got me to go to art center saturday high mm. uh, and uh i didn't have a car so i would take the bus from the projects all the way to the, like the rose bowl and then from the rose bowl i would walk <laughs> all the way up the hill that's, that's a, a long walk, walk man that's, <laughs> that's a that's a long walk, and you know, but um, by the time I got to class, yeah. I was too tired to even do the art, but, yeah. I, but I was just observing. And there was a lot of um, international students that were amazing. They were yeah. just amazing. Art Center, it was just amazing, like amazing. So that school was like, at, well, it, it left me at awe, you know. Yeah, I think, um, you know, because I was that little kid that drew too, but I never had exposure like that. I can imagine like being seeing that then you start to see like whoa this art world is something a lot larger than i can even imagine yeah. that had to be huge and i i first saw the art center when i was like maybe 24. Mm. what a magnificent place i mean i was blown away by what it year was that i had to be in the 90s like 90 95 maybe I yeah, think, yeah. Yeah, around that time I went to go um, just to see what it was, you know. Um, amazing place. Um, but, yeah, I was I was awestricken by that already. But I was already working in law offices and stuff like that. Anyways, um, so in high school they started to push you towards more art, and they saw that, you know, you had more than, you know. Well, because I sucked at everything else, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, like, I wanted... <laughs> I wanted to do something that has some kind of security, like a ba I want. I was pursuing like a um, a job that was that everyone, re um, how do you say, like can um, can use, like an yeah, okay. uh, electrician or okay, yeah. or something, or like or like even like an architect. So I took architectural classes, and I didn't like all the measurements that you had to do. <laughs> Because it's math, yeah. Yeah, so I said, oh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and um, and then I got into, like, um, other... I basically was failing at everything. And, it, yeah. you know, and then even when I went to to City College, I really don't, I really don't know why I went to a City College because, um, you know, I, I had to, like, um, cheat in order to get through the classes. Wow. So I really don't know what I was doing, but I was doing great in the art classes. Oh, yeah. And the teachers were pushing me. So it wasn't until, like, after three years of city college that I realized maybe I should pursue art. Mm. And I really, th even though Art Center was amazing, I didn't know really how big it was. Yeah. I was very naive, you know. So I, um, I applied to Art Center because everyone was telling me to go there, you know. And, uh, and before Art Center, I was not 
discipline at anything, and I wouldn't finish any projects. You mm. know, I wasn't lazy. I just wasn't disciplined. You know, mm. but as soon as I got an art center and I, and I saw, and I saw um, um, ev- how hard everyone was working, I went from like basically from the couch potato to full on mm. being disciplined, like overnight. There was no like transition. It was overnight. <laughs> You know, and uh, and it was amazing. Like I look back, and I'm really happy I went there because it, everything that I have in terms of my work ethic comes from there. Did it teach you like beginning, middle, and end? Or, I mean, I, I'm trying to like. What do you mean? Uh, I'm trying to figure out like how because you're already drawing, you're already doing stuff, you're already like have you your whole life. But did Art Center teach you like? how to structure a project maybe or yeah 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 no matter how good you were you had to start from the beginning yeah you know so i just went along for the ride i could have i could have looking back i could have um um like said to the teacher i, I already know this you know yeah. then then they they give you a test you pass the test you can skip the class oh, okay but um I wasn't in no rush to get out of school and look for a job. So I was just like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm going to be in there and do what I need to do yeah. and learn, learn everything. But um, how many years did you go there? Three years. And, and they cover it. It's like a scholarship thing? Or? Well, in the beginning, I, I got loans and then I applied for a scholarship and I got a full scholarship. That's awesome. Yeah. So then I was able even to pay back the loan. With the scholarships. Uh, yeah. That's uh, awesome. But, uh, yeah, like, I love being there. And it was crazy because from from our, from the projects, uh, I would sometimes leave the, the house, get through the drug dealers and the drug addicts just to get into my car, and then go to art center, and then sometimes... Be, I had to be careful to avoid hitting the deers. So it was like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. like that contrast. It was very surreal, you know. And yeah. What a trip. Uh, yeah. It's a, a, the first time I went up there, I totally felt like, where the hell am I? It is a whole different world. It was, it was cool. Yeah. And even it's even like, even if you're in Pasadena and go up, it's a different world, you know. So let alone, yeah. like, let alone. Well, it's isolated. Yeah. Yeah. Let alone all, all the way from. Boyle Heights, Ramona Gardens to there. But no one knew that I was coming from the projects. Yeah. You know, well, that's interesting. Because they can't. never asked the question. Yeah. It's just basically, you know, everyone's just so caught up in what they have to do and meeting the assignments. And, yeah. And, uh, and I never had coffee when I was there. And I, and I was, and I never was really stressed because I, I didn't fuck, uh, I didn't mess around. Yeah, you, you were know? there to work. But I? a lot of people, I realized they were stressed and they were all like in their coffee addicts, I guess because they were trying to have a social life while they were there. Oh, I see. So I had like no social life because when I went in, I weighed like 175 and when I came out at Arsene, I was like 146. Damn. So I was like, I went there to work and, and get the most out of it. Just work, go home and two separate things. Yeah. I mean, school work. Yeah, you know, it was good. So, you know, so like being in there, uh, like top, gave me the foundation to be able to, to do everything that I do, like in a very comfortable manner. Yeah. So I graduated, you know, from our center with um, high honors. It was only one person ahead of me with a better GPA. Wow. But I, I didn't, I didn't know they were giving away like high honors, those awards, you know, yeah. I didn't know. Um, uh, I think if I wouldn't have got if I wouldn't have gotten a C on history, I would have I would have beat that guy. You know? <laughs> but it's, it's all right. I on, on art history, or I just got a regular C in art history. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. So, in in your early stuff that I've seen, was it all mostly like illustration? Like, no, 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 no. So no one has seen my illustration. Okay. Because I only did it. I, I only did it in school. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not out out on the internet. It's yeah. nowhere. So when I graduated from uh, from our center, um, I was doing um, 
work that was re- that was related to the Chicano community. Like I was painting like gang members, mm-hmm. I was painting street vendors, um, I was painting um, just like just everyday people, you know, from from the neighborhood. But you know, so like uh, I got a lot of support, and, I, and right away, like a year after I graduated, I had a show. And mm-hmm. on um, Main Street, like um, by Venice, uh, with Julia Rico, but um, but right away, like everything was a success. Mm-hmm. I was selling all my work and everything. But right o- right away after two years of exhibiting, uh, which I had no plan of being like a, a artist, it just kind of like happened, you know. Mm. I realized that it was like a limited, like it was a small community. I realized that our community was small. So like like it didn't take long to start to get to know everyone. Mm. And then I said to myself, oh, <coughs> you know, I want more than this if I'm going to continue this. So after four years, I think after four years of graduating, I went back to grad school at UCLA. Oh, no way. You know, because wow. I, wanted, I wanted to, with the intention of, of doing work that I can get to a bigger audience. Yeah. You know? Wow, that really blows my mind. <laughs> well, Just, I, I got I got to see that everyone was fighting for one bone, you know. Yeah. I saw like it, it didn't take long, and then I said, "Oh, that's how am I going to survive?" You know, how yeah. I mean, like how? for the amount of money that's out there, you're saying like everybody was trying to get everyone. Everyone was like chasing the same collectors, yeah. the same Chicano collectors. Everyone yeah. was like, it was like a small circle, you know. Mm-hmm. What do you think UCLA did to help you? Well, I went in there with the intention of um, of doing work. I wanted to present my work in a way where anyone can relate to it, but still mm. have the same ideas. Mm. Like, for example, I got known right away there uh, for the back of the heads. Yeah. But the ba- like the back of the heads, the way I presented it to the school was uh, making a commentary on uh, portraiture. Like, it's just mm. about, like, about portraiture and, and trying to find a different way of looking at portraiture. That's it. Yeah. But really what it was about is about racial profiling. Mm. You know, so, but, I mean, they don't need to know all the details. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you started by observing people and, like, showing the back of their head to try to... Uh, like identify no 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 like um like i w- um i wanted to like like instead of painting a gang member and talking about racial profiling mm. it's gonna it's, I'm, i was from my experience and, and what, what was going on i thought i had a small audience that was going to be open to looking at that kind of body of work mm. so i started i asked myself how can i do this um, so that anyone can look at it mm. and just look at it for what it is, you know. Um, Got it. So and then I started to play with the portrait three quarter, and then eventually from the back, and to make it so that I wouldn't get pigeonholed, mm-hmm. and so that I would have a bigger audience. Um, I went out of my way to only use white and black models. Wow, you know. Why? Because you know, like the uh, I didn't want to be boxed in. Oh, he's the Mexican artist with the I back see. of the head, you know, or yeah. he's the Chicano artist with the back of the head. Uh, yeah. That puts you into like having a smaller audience once again. You know, going back to what I was saying. You know, got it. That makes a lot of sense. You know, I'm a Chicano, but I yeah. identify as an artist. So, the, so this way I can do whatever I want and be in everything that I want to be a part of. You know. Yeah. Uh, after that, you started painting the houses. After that, um, I wanted to do something that um, that wasn't a portrait, and that can tie in with the with the portraits. Yeah. So somehow I landed in the houses, you know. Yeah. yeah. And those are beautiful too, and those are also um, like minimalized, right? Yeah, they're 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 treated the same way as the as the heads, you know. Um, but graduating from like from UCLA, like within the first year, 
I got into the Whitney Biennial, and I think that they have five curators for the Whitney at that. I think they always do. I don't, maybe I don't really don't know how it goes, but uh, Hugh Davis was one of them, and he chose me. Mm. So I put like I think three heads and three houses and three standing figures. Wow. And um, and right away, you know, I, I got noticed by a lot of galleries. I got approached by a lot of like the main galleries in the art world, not not small galleries, but I got approached by Kagosian and and he offered me a show and and uh, it was like I went from from being in control of everything to mm. being like stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> they finally stressed you. Yeah, out. <laughs> I finally stressed it my life. You know, like uh, like hardcore anxiety. I'm like, oh my god. But uh, you know, like, is it is it the responsibility of having to produce right away? I think it's expect. Looking back, I think it's expectation. Mm. I think because everything went well. The exhibition went well. Everything sold out. Everything went well. Good turnout and everything. Everything was cool, you know, when we had to show. Yeah. And so when I had to show, I realized, what was I so st stressed out about? <laughs> like, it was all in my head, you know? Yeah. I, I think it was about, like, not feeling that I was good enough mm. to show at that level, you know? So, mm. so you, you, like, stress yourself out to try to um, do something that's better than you're already doing. But whatever I was doing was good enough. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't approach me. But I didn't feel that, yeah. so I, I, you know, I um, freaked myself out for nothing, and yeah. you know, but, uh, <laughs> but it was a good outcome. But yeah. it was a good outcome, and yeah. it was a really good uh, lesson, and and it was it was fun. It was like, uh, it was like I think I got like a small taste of, of like what it is to be at, at that level because. Um, I mean, what, what I'm saying is like, I got bombarded with attention, mm. you know, and, yeah. but I like, I don't like, it's fun, but I really don't like that kind of attention. It's like, it's overwhelming, you know? Yeah. So, so what do you do then? Do you, cause you want to keep getting that attention, right? I mean, because it comes with more work and it comes with, you know, yeah, more shows and it comes with more um, well, you, you know, you can, you can, you know, as an artist, you know, like you, you have control of what you want to be a part of, like what dinners you want to go to or mm. what openings you want to go to or, or, you know, you have control. Like back then uh, I was getting um, um, invited to so many dinners that I could have easily just lived off the dinners I was, every night <laughs> lunch and dinner lunch so and dinner. these are like, like people just invited you hey let's go uh, eat no that would get calls the gallery oh this collector wants to take you out to dinner this collector wants to take you wow. out for lunch you know like back to back and I would tell the gallery uh, you know I got work to do yeah <laughs> you know like if you want to work for me you know I got out I did but it, it, it was fun but it was, a, it was like a little bit a little bit too much I don't know I don't know how like people that sustain that like back to back, how they're able to do it. I think it also maybe calms down, you know, and then they're able to just after they meet you a few times. Yeah. How does that work? They they just invite you to dinner and and just to get to know you and see if yeah, they yeah, want to buy they, your they stuff. Yeah, just want to get to know you, show you their collection, and, and oh, okay, uh, so you come to their house and or wherever they or wherever you meet. Yeah, you know, it's 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 fun. I mean, to to me. Um, uh, it's um, it's like an honor to be a part of the art world yeah. where people are supporting you to do what you love. You know, like it's yeah. it's really 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 cool. It's, so I don't I don't say no to opportunities, and I and I I give it myself like a hundred percent. You know. Yeah. How how does it feel, or how do you go from like feeling like like you're you know, in a, in a machine, like, I got to put something out. I got to put something out, you know, like, how does it, how do you go from that to like, just painting what you want when you want? Well, I don't, um, if I don't have a commission or a deadline, yeah. I maybe do one, one painting every six weeks or maybe every two months. Oh. I don't work a lot. Um, oh. it's not that I have like no desire to work. It's just that I'm observing, you know, like yeah. I go, I go to museums. 
I look at videos. I look at magazines. Um, I go to galleries. Yeah. And then I put it all together and, and I do a painting. So I do a painting and then if it comes out great, I try to figure out how can I repeat that because what, what did I do? Like, what is it about it that is, mm. that's working? So how can I repeat it? So I spend like a week or two trying to figure that out. That's, yeah, that makes sense. No, but if I fail, yeah. the same thing. <laughs> why, did, why did it fail? Why did it fail? What did I do wrong? Yeah. So like, so, you know, it's like that, pro I think, this changed like in the last 10 years when in the past I would just work, 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 yeah. work. But now it's less, less physical work and the rest is, is just like observing. And then when I work, I do my best to work from a place of being neutral. Like, yeah. like I have no joy when I do my art. It's all meditative. Huh. You know, one time on Facebook I posted that and everyone's comments was like, oh, I feel bad for you. You know, you'll, you'll get it back. I go, get what back? <laughs> I had like, like literally like about 400 comments about yeah. how bad they, they felt for me, you know. <laughs> Meditation, I guess you're saying it's still a good thing. I mean, it's not. It's very quiet and peaceful, yeah. that's how I try, but it's yeah. not like, it's not joyful. Yeah. And I for for me, yeah. I'm not against it. You yeah. know, if, if everyone's out there experiencing joy, that's awesome. But for yeah. me, it doesn't work. For me, if I'm doing a painting and I'm experiencing joy, yeah. um, what happens is that um, I'm overwhelmed by the joy, and yeah. I'm making, and then that's how I feel. I'm just in a space of joy, and then I do a painting, and. I can't see it. I can't see what's wrong with it or what it needs, but I'm happy. I'm still joy, and I think and, and the joy is overlapping the bad painting. Such a beautiful insight, yeah. you know. So and then and then what happens is like, I, I leave home excited. You know, every, <laughs> I go home really happy, and then I come back the you next day it. and I say, oh my god, this is like oh, really fuck. bad. Yeah. So I destroy it and start over. Oh my over. God, that's such an interesting insight. That's such so, an honest insight too. Yeah, you know, so, so yeah. for me it's like, it has to be like right in the middle where I can make choices. Like, do I want to go this way? Do I yeah. want to go that way? And, and you know. There, there's one post that you did not too far behind where you, it was a painting of the apples and the, and oh, the yeah, gun yeah. and you like, you like, erased it, yeah. I mean, it was a beautiful painting to no, anybody but I else's it, eyes. I was, I was sharing with you why I didn't, not with with everyone, yeah. you and everyone, why I didn't like the painting. Yeah. You know, that I didn't like the composition, yeah. that I didn't like the placement of the gun, Yeah. and I didn't like the color. So... That's really interesting. It, it's, it's faster to redo it than to try to fix it. Wow. Because when you redo it, you end up, if you change one mark, you end up to come back and changing the other marks, you know, so, yeah. so, so that they all complement like each other. It's like a wave. Yeah, so it's better it. to just start over. So, um, um, yeah, you know, I practice non-attachment. So I, um, when it doesn't work out, and, I'm, and I feel like it's not working out, then I erase it. Mm. It's just like editing. Like if you're a writer and you, yeah. you write your story and you start editing, it is no different. Yeah, yeah. But people, because they see a finished object and they think, you know, well, I like it. How come he doesn't like it? They think I'm crazy for erasing yeah. it or, or painting over yeah. it. I, I think it's honest is what it, it is. Like you're honest about it instead of lying to yourself even, you know? <laughs> Well, you know, yeah. You don't want to have something bad laying yeah. around. I, I love those pieces, too. I mean, talking about the gun. And um, uh, I, I know that you've mentioned that it, it, your dad used to have a gun at his table and used to bring him food. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and then you created that whole series. And uh, you said that you wanted to um, show, like, the intensity. Well, the um, um, my dad... Uh, we always have the, the gun in the night table yeah. because of the neighborhood and it was loaded and it was ready at 38. That's crazy. So he, but you know, I, I was, I grew up with that gun even when I was even like four, when I was four years old, he would wake me up to, to go to, to go to T, no, not, not four years old, like six years old. He would wake me up to go to TJ 
And just so he can cross the gun, cross the border, he will put the gun in my, in my shorts, my belt, my pants, because oh. he knew that they were not going to check me. Yeah. And then uh, he will take me to a, a bathroom and then take it out after we cross the border and put it in his boot. But that's like the earliest memory I have of the gun. And um, um, later, you know, when I was like 9 and 16, he would ask me, can you bring me uh, an apple, uh, toast, banana, or this and that? And, and I would always put it next to the gun. But uh, it was like a date. I, ne- I, I never thought about it. Or I never said, oh, my God, there's a gun. You know, I never, I never question it. it it was just something that was there yeah you know and that, i mean we all knew not to not to touch it you know now growing up around guns and then being in that neighborhood did you ever like get into guns yourself no 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 because um how did you avoid that because that because i saw all the other kids going to jail and to shit. jail or like it plus I, I i don't have like a violent nature yeah. you know like i try to uh um <coughs> I tried to talk my way out of situations, yeah. you know. Since of, you were little. Yeah, so I was little thing. because uh, um, I just, the idea, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, for protection, uh, you have no choice. But if you can avoid it, if it's not for protection, then, then you know, then you, yeah. then my thing is to avoid it. Because the idea of hitting another human being is just very... Uh, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. But for protection, you got to do what you got to do, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy, too. I, I have people, everybody around me has guns. Some people have arsenals. And it's like, I don't. So it's just. Let me, let me tell you, like, I know a lot of people that do some bad things. And a lot of them, as macho as they are, have a hard time li- living with what they did. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I had this guy approach me who used to be like a. Let's just say he did a lot of bad things, and yeah. and he asked me, "Do you think um, yoga will help me with negative thoughts?" Wow, you know, and I and I said, "What do you mean negative? Yeah, I have this really negative bad thoughts every day, and I can't get rid of them. And uh, do you think yoga and meditation will help me?" I said, "And I know what he does, you know, uh, and I, this is but this this." Uh, conversation was like 15 years ago and I said well you know if you stop doing what you're doing <laughs> then maybe you wouldn't have those negative thoughts but there's no yoga in the world that's going to help you with that you mm. know, or meditation I don't I don't know maybe you will <laughs> I really don't think so <laughs> it'll help you, you or else you will see criminals <laughs> taking Everybody over the yoga, yoga classes yeah. it'll help you during the yoga exercises but after you're done maybe not <laughs> Maybe not at night when you're trying to sleep. No, I have a little quick story. One time after coming from art center, like at two in the morning, you know, entering the projects, mm. uh, I was looking, making sure there was no one around before I parked my car, and I didn't see anyone. I get out of my car very comfortable, mm. and in the corner of my eye, I see a shadow running towards me. I said, oh. By then, everything went slow motion. I was looking back, because I knew what was going to happen at that moment. I had an idea. So I, I turned around very slowly, and by the time I turned around, I had a gun pointed at my forehead, Damn. you know. And then uh, looking back, I realized that uh, I was very still and calm. Yeah. Because nothing you can do at that point, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I just gave, I gave him eye contact, and when, 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 we, when we got eye contact, he, he was like, Oh, sorry, bro. I thought you were someone else. And then he took off running like the Joker, like with the gun, <laughs> the gun in the air, and just like laughing oh like a madman. Oh my God! You know, but um, that moment, like, really, like those moments, as bad as they were, they were like wake up calls. Yeah. Like they would get me like to be like an extreme focus because yeah. I would say to myself, "I got to get out of here." You know, like yeah. I really have to get out of here. Like so. Like, the focus that I had in school was nothing to, like, play with, you know. Yeah. And I think you, do you still have that, like, strong focus, like, career-wise, or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm very, because, I'm I mean, very, I'm very focused, but I try to, 
I like the idea of, um, what do you call it, uh, like competence with, like, with no effort, you know. Mm. Because it's, it's also something to, like, be doing this for such a long time already, you know, and, and like, to, yeah, still, since be, to still be a, a artist, you know, that people like and people want to go see you. And well, people I think are, too, yeah. Yeah, people are still, you know, like, what's he doing next, you know? That's a... Uh, that's that's a thing in itself, you know, to to have that kind of focus, to stay in it, to stay in it. I say that for myself because I'm like on one thing and then I jump on another thing and then I jump on another thing. I'm like constantly changing the things that I do, you know. Well, I, I don't see that when I saw your book. I saw there was a lot of um, consistency, you know. But what I mean, so so let's say for example, like you know, I was doing acting first oh okay you and, mean like uh, other yeah. things that, that are not related to yeah, yeah different to photography different mediums and then i switched to photography and then I, now you know podcasting and i'm actually working on filmmaking next which i, I already made. no but that's good i mean that's what's being um you know like 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 uh, my wife now anna morales she's like she says i don't just don't want to paint you know i want to yeah. i want to do um I want to do sculpture. I want to do ceramics. I want. She's do, awesome at. You know, so I tell her, "Yeah, go ahead." You know, um, but um, one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's good at what she does. She's yeah. she's, she's a really uh, she's she has she has her mark. You know that that uh, when you see one of her pieces, you see you know that's hers. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now and where you're going with your work. Well, I have a gallery, which I'm really happy with. It's um, Harper's Gallery, and uh, they're in um, Melrose. Uh, they have two spaces in Chelsea, mm. one in Uptown, and one at the Hamptons. Damn. So um, they saw one of my swimming pools that I posted on, on Instagram, and they asked me if... If I can do a show with that, mm. and uh, and uh, where that pool came from is just that I wanted to do something that because um, I love abstraction, but I don't know how to start and how to end. And that's like, you know, and that's very frustrating that I cannot understand that that that, that language. But uh, so when I do a, a pool. Because what happened is I saw one on Instagram, a photo, and to me it looked abstract. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can do that. I can paint that and blur the line between, like, uh, figuration or not figuration, between the landscape and, abs and abstraction. Mm -hmm. So I did one, and I was able to make marks that I don't do in any of my other work, mm -hmm. you know. So, and then uh, I felt a sense of like freedom to just like express myself in a different way, mm. and uh, and they're they're interesting because in everything that I do, I know exactly what I'm looking for and how it's going to come out. I have full control. Mm. With these, I have no control. I I wanted to. I was saving this too for this section where. Um, like looking at your work from like the the drawings that you did at the beginning of of the the portraits from behind, mm -hmm. and then into paintings, and then to the the houses, which became a lot more minimalized and controlled, like extreme control, yeah, I mean, yeah. beautiful symmetrical control and just gorgeousness. And then um, the guns, and then like I noticed, and now you're just. You were dabbing at something just like crazy. <laughs> All the videos I posted. Yeah, it. and I was like, oh, that's exciting Like yeah. to see you just like, you know, throwing paint at a oh, canvas. I'm, I'm throwing the paint all right, yeah. It's, I love that, though. It's such a... It's crazy. Like, it's a cool thing to see, um, you know, from being so, like, you know, precise to now, like, having this well, explosion. I, I, yeah, I try to... Uh, give what the body, what the work needs, you know, mm. or not give, or, but do what the work needs. So mm. these particular paintings, it's about being expressive. So I have to like l let my arm go, let my hand mm. go in. And it's, and it's really interesting because when I'm painting, I, I think that I know what I'm doing, you know, and I'm up close, everything Everything looks like I know what I'm doing. Mm. And I back up and everything comes together. And then you get a really close 
and it's mm-hmm. a mess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's interesting because um, um, it's, it's, it's exactly what I want. I want it, I want it like a, a, uh, like to be like in the middle of, of realism and abstraction, and I did it. I did mm-hmm. it like right away, like just by putting my attention to it. And mm-hmm. everyone that sees the paintings in person, they, I tell them there's like a couple of things going on. You step back the n- normal space, and it looks like they were rendered. Like mm. they look, they read very well, like they were rendered. And you get up close, and it's just one mark, or it's just all these crazy marks. And I went and bought the the most affordable brushes. Like you get three for five dollars. Yeah. So that I, <laughs> so you can beat them up. So I can beat them up, and after the painting, just trash them. Yeah. You know, and, and many times the hairs come out and get stuck in the painting, yeah. and I leave them there. Oh, that's crazy. And I would never do that in the of other course, world. Of course, yeah. But uh, it's 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 good, and, yeah. and um, I think it's gonna go very well, and I'm really happy with that. So, yeah, you know. I just seen it. I I sensed the like the freedom of it, right? Some yeah. Kind of like you know, expression, freedom. Yeah, I love that. What What do you um, where do you see, like all of this? I don't know, this is, I guess I just, I'm just thinking of this right now. Like, where do you see all of your work going in the future? Like after, in the afterlife? Afterlife? <laughs> I don't know. Do you think about that? Like, I mean. No, no, no. Because, um, you know, it all depends on the collector. Yeah. It could end up in a state sale. It can end up, it can end up like in swap meet. Yeah. It can end up in a museum. It can end up like in an auction house. Like, it all depends on the collector. Because I have some. My paintings are in, in museums, and I have some, you know, that have been passed around from one collector to another. So I think it all depends what the collector does with his collection. So I'm not going to know, so it really, it really doesn't matter. What would be a dream show for you right now? A dream show? Uh, hmm, that's a good, uh, to do something, I think, with more abstraction, yeah. Mm. You know, so I'm leaning that way. Like, I want to go that direction. You know, I want to, it's not that I want the challenge. It's, it's more about me just liking that right now more than anything else, you know. So mm. the next body of work I'm going to do it is uh, I went to Oaxaca and I bought these, like, cheap masks. They're like, I think... They're like three dollars. Mm. I think they're made out of some kind of like um, plastic, but it's durable. Like it's durable, mm. and they're like the mask that they use for festivals. Mm. So I bought a whole bunch, and I'm gonna paint them all white, and and try to, to see where I can go with them. You know, mm. so that's that's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to that. You know. So actually painting on the mask. On the mask, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, I like the work of Francisco Toledo, and um, I love how his work transcends. So I want to, I, I'm gravitated to, to doing that, you know, like yeah. I've had this idea for a long time, and then, and then my partner, Anna, she, uh, she goes, I want to do masks, and then I just did it. She thinks I, I always steal her ideas. She just basically reminds me of something yeah. that I already had. Because if, if it's not within my vocabulary, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, um, do you have students, or is there anybody that you teach? Is there? No, no, no. I stopped teaching uh, because I saw that things were, were changing, you know, like, you couldn't like, I don't want to say what school I was a part of, but I would push the students and then they would go mm. complain to the chair. <laughs> and you, then couldn't the, like, you couldn't be like, you couldn't be old school teacher I that just be an old school hated. teacher. And, and then. Um, oh, that's hilarious. And then the, the, the chair would call me in. And, <laughs> and that was happening a lot. I was making students cry. Oh my God. And then, you know, I had one chair at Long Beach who, um, uh, he liked me and he would laugh. He would say, what did you do this time? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I would say, oh, I just did this. He goes, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, but it was like happening 
a little too much, and then I decided not, not, not to do it anymore. But I have one student who's going to kill me for not knowing his la last name, Francis um, from, from Art Center. Um, this student is amazing. Right now he's showing at, at Philip Martin, mm. and uh, he has a gallery in San Francisco. He, he's, he's showing in China, showing in New York and London. But um, this guy is amazing, and like you know, you you can push him all you want, and he's not gonna back down. Mm. Do, does somebody have to have like a natural like ability first, or or is it something that can be taught like completely? You can be. I I believe that if you have um, dedication, focus, you you can learn it. That, so the idea is first is to learn the craft, like, and you have to master. You have to master, but these days no one is really into mastery. They're just yeah. whatever they can pull off, you know. Definitely. So, um, if if it takes time, but you have to master whatever you do. If it's drawing, watercolor, oil, or acrylic, or pastel, whatever it is, so you master it. And after you master it, from what I, from my experience, what I believe is that you you have to be able to be relaxed about it, like like do it with no effort, mm. and it's then and then you go into the idea of just uh, ex expressing yourself, you know, as to what you want to do, and by then mm. things are gonna start changing, you know. But um, so you you learn something so well, and you learn all the techniques of how to apply and how to shade and how to color and all that you learn all that first so that when you actually start to create you already know how to do what the end result you want does that make sense like, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. like well, let's say you have an, a picture in your mind you know now oh i'm going to approach that this way because i know that i can get the outcome that i want that way yeah you know and then you, you, you have to be critical you know you, you have to um and you have to make an effort to um um, do something that's like you got to try and make something that's different than what's out there you know yeah definitely I mean you can do something that's that's out there and do it beautiful and you're gonna do it there's like anything goes in the art scene like and but there's there's different markets you know there's yeah. the commercial market there's you know there's like what they call lowbrow or or there's this and that I mean but um it all depends what you want to be a part of, you know, and then you, whatever you want to be a part of, you do homework and you look at you, like you research those artists, you research those galleries, and then you start working towards that direction. And then um, you, uh, you have to find a gallery that does work, that fits, that, that you, you fit into it. Mm. Um, and in my experience, the only way you get into a gallery is through a recommendation. Hmm. You, can't, you can't just walk in or you can't send your work to the gallery. It's not going to work. You know? They have to see you out there. And no, so no, it's a recommendation. I know, but... Recommendation to a curator, a collector, or another artist. So you still have to do some kind of shows, though, for those people to see you, right? No, you, you, can, you can just basically invite them to your studio, oh, okay. and then they help, they help you. Let me talk to this dealer. Oh, okay. You know, but uh, for, like, uh, I used to hang out at three of the galleries that I was with in the past. I used to hang out, I used to hang out in the gallery. All the time, yeah. You know, with, and I would see all the, what do you call it, the portfolios that were being sent. Mm. If there wasn't a return envelope, Trash. <laughs> oh my God! They wouldn't even they wouldn't even look at them. <laughs> oh man! They they see they would get so much. It's taking them away from what they do. Yeah, yeah. So if if there was a return envelope, they would nicely put it back in and just send it back. Okay. And some of them would put a note, you know, thank you. At this moment, we're not accepting whatever. Yeah. Others would just send it right back. Wow. You know, of course there is. It does. You know, it's like. Like if you if you're gonna send your work out, it's, it's like playing lotto. It may happen. Yeah. It may happen that you get the dealer in a moment where they're open to look at the work and they glance at it. Oh, this is really nice, and they call you back. That's very rare. From from what I've seen, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Usually people 
are connected somehow. It's all you have to be connected yeah. and be recommended, you know, and those that level of galleries. Well, what, tell us again where that show is that you have coming up. It's with Harper's Gallery in Chelsea, you know, New York. Okay. Um, but once you go to the website, like it's for February 22nd. So what's your website? No, no, I'm saying the Harper. Oh, well, the no, Harper I don't have a website, website, but once you go to the Harper's website. Okay, I'll put the Harper's website down here below. Yeah. Um, people, and uh, it'll be in the links below. Um, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to talk about? Is what I well, there's, there's a lot, but I don't want, I don't want to make this like a series. <laughs> 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 it's all good, bro. I'm really happy to be here you know, and be a part of your collection, so it's all good. Uh, dude, I'm so happy that you came. Um, again, it's rare to see you, and and you are one of those artists that you know we love to um, see working. We love to see your work. I love to see every time you have a show and all that. So, um, there is a question that we ask everybody at the end of each podcast, uh. and it's a very vague question that is um, you can answer it in any way you want. I only I ask the guests to try to answer in one sentence, uh-huh. and. Um, so if a, if a being from another planet or a spirit from another world <laughs> like presented itself in front of you and was able to look at your entire life and all of the work that you've done and, and all of the things that you've been through and how you stayed focused this whole time and they, they stood in front of you and they asked, how would you reply if they said, Salomón Huerta, how do you do it? <laughs> if they asked me that question, yeah. how do I do it? Oh, my God. How do I do it? Wow. Well, uh... With all my heart, I guess, you know. With all my, With all heart. my heart, yeah. There it is. Thank you very much, bro. We really appreciate you. And uh, oh, thank you. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs>